you need a user account to access the Linux system. There are two types of user accounts, local and network. Local user accounts work only on the local system. Network user accounts work on all systems of the network. A server or a centralized system saves network user accounts information. Administrators create and configure many security policies for these accounts, such as allowed systems, time slots, login attempts, and account lockout policies. By default, these accounts are not available on Linux systems. If you want to use a network user account to log in, you must first connect the system to the network and create a network user account on the server system. If a system is not attached to the network, you cannot use a network user account to log into it. However, you can always use a local user account to log in. Linux saves local user accounts information in the slash etc slash password file on the local system. In other words, the slash etc slash password file is the database of all local user accounts. When you use a local user account to log in, Linux uses this file to check the entered username. If the typed username and password are correct, it grants the login permission. If they are incorrect, it rejects the request. The slash etc slash password is a regular text file. You can use any available text editor to edit or update this file. For example, you can use VI, Vim, Emacs, or Gedit. This file saves entries in lines. Each line represents a user account. For example, if this file has 10 entries, there are 10 user accounts. You may be surprised to see a huge list of user accounts on a default system. Don't worry. Apart from a few user accounts, all of these are system accounts. Linux uses them to run various services. You should never delete, edit, or update these accounts. Each entry has seven fields separated by colons. These fields are username or login name, encrypted password, user ID, group ID, user details, user's home directory and user's login shell. Let us understand these fields in detail. The first field saves usernames. Each username must have a unique value. Two user accounts cannot have the same username. The default limit of this field is 32 characters. Because of this, a username cannot be more than 32 characters in length. In addition to it, you are also not allowed to use colons and new lines characters in the username. A colon is a field separator, and a new line is an entry separator. Besides colons and new lines, you can use any other characters or symbols. However, to avoid unnecessary confusion, you should use only alphanumeric characters in the username. Usernames are case sensitive. For example, these are different usernames. Although you can use usernames in any case, lowercase names are traditional and easy to type. This field gets value from the user add command. The user add command adds the new user account at the end of the file. Here is the entry for the user account we have just created. The second field of this entry contains a placeholder value x. Historically, this field was used to store user passwords. Later, Linux moved passwords into a separate file, called slash etc slash shadow. Now, this field saves a placeholder value. The X here indicates that the password is available in another file. Let us close this file and open the slash etc slash shadow file. This is the entry for the user we have just created. This entry will save the encrypted password and all password related information for this user. Unlike the slash etc slash password file, the slash etc slash shadow file is not world readable. To verify this, we can view the file permission of both files. The slash etc slash shadow file gets value from the password command. The password command encrypts the given password and saves it in the slash etc slash shadow file. When a user logs in, the login process uses the slash etc slash password file to authenticate the username and slash etc slash shadow file to authenticate the password. The next field is the user ID. Linux assigns a unique ID to all user accounts. Linux uses it to track and manage all user actions, such as creating files, modifying system properties, starting applications and processes. It reserves the first user ID for the root user account. After assigning the user ID to the root user account, it assigns user IDs to system accounts such as bin, LP, mail, news, games, and FTP. User IDs of regular user accounts usually start from 1000. The next field stores the user's primary group's ID. When we add a new user account, it creates a new group with the same name and makes it the primary group of the user. In this field, it saves the group's ID. Unless you manually change or customize the group ID, Linux picks a group ID similar to the user ID. Linux saves all group-related information in the slash etc slash group file. It uses group ID instead of group names to track, monitor, and authenticate group activities.
The next field stores descriptive information about the user account. For example, you can use this field to save the user's full name, email address, phone number, and position in the organization. The chfn command adds this information. To view the updated information, we need to reopen the password file. The next field stores information about the user's home directory. The login process uses this information to decide where to put the user immediately after login. Or you can say, this is the default directory that the user gets immediately after the login process. If you skip this information when creating a user, the shell automatically sets it to slash home slash username. If you want to configure the user home directory to another place, you need to use the D switch followed by the path of the new directory. For example, this command will set the user's home directory under the root folder. The last field stores information about the user's default shell. While creating a regular user account, if you skip this information, it uses the default shell. The default shell for a regular user account is slash bin slash bash. Some special accounts never require shell access. Administrators usually assign a fake shell such as slash bin slash false or set this field to blank in these accounts. System accounts that do not need shell access use slash s bin slash no login in this field. This precaution prevents hackers from breaking the system through these accounts. Let us quickly recap all fields again. The first field stores the username. It gets its value from the user add command. The second field stores a placeholder value x. Historically, it saved the user password. Now, Linux saves passwords in the slash etc slash shadow file. The third field saves the user ID. When we create a user account, Linux automatically assigns a unique incremental user ID. You can use the ID command to view this value. The fourth field saves the user's primary group's ID. The slash etc slash group file saves all group related information. The fifth field saves user details. The chfn command adds this information. The sixth field saves the user's home directory path. By default, the user gets the home directory under the slash home directory. If you want to assign a custom directory, use the option D followed by the path of the new directory when creating the user account. The last field saves the user's default shell. The default shell for a user account is the slash bin slash bash. If you want to assign a custom shell, use the option S followed by the path of the new shell when creating the user account. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.